Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. Members of the head table, MP, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh, former ministers, Kevin Ramnarine, Ramona Ramdial, and Chair Rudy Indar Singh. Greetings. Today, I want to talk to you about a very crucial issue that we all must have concern about and act upon, no matter where we stand in this country, politically or otherwise. We must end the abuse by our governments. As the chair said, I just returned from a mission in Guyana where I was asked to supervise a team of researchers and analysts there to look at the political and constitutional crisis that is occurring. Now, this is in another country. It's not in Trinidad. However, what is happening there affects us greatly. If we do not stand up for justice and the rule of law over there in Guyana, how can we do it here? We cannot let this abuse happen in our fellow neighboring CARICOM country because it will spill over here and it is already spilling over and I will explain how. And again, this is not just a matter for the opposition. This is something fundamental to our society. So people from civil society need to raise their voice. People from the chambers of commerce, academics, trade unionists, NGOs, professional bodies, even members of the government and the ruling party with a conscience. We must all join together to protect the fundamental values of our society. And we must not be bullied by the government and labeled political or opposition mouthpieces when we stand up for what is right. That is a way for us to be divided. And it's, it is only when we are all divided that the minority can rule over us. When we are afraid to stand up for what is right because they are going to call us names or label us in a certain way. We cannot allow that to happen because that is how our country will get stolen from us. And it is being stolen from us. I want to just briefly explain what is happening in Guyana so we can understand how that is relevant to what is happening here. Many of you will know, but some of you may not, that there was a motion of no confidence in December that was successfully passed in Guyana. You know, we've had many motions of no confidence raised in Parliament here in Trinidad, but we have never had one actually pass. A motion of no confidence is when the Parliament says, we don't have confidence in the Prime Minister anymore, over there it's the President, but same idea, the head of government. You must dissolve and we go to elections. So we've tried several times on both sides, whenever whatever party is in opposition, they always try, but it, it never ever works out. Sometimes a government might even dissolve the parliament before it goes. But it actually happened in Guyana for the first time. So it's a precedent. It's a precedent for all of us. So do you think the government stepped down? No. They didn't at all. They were supposed to dissolve parliament and call new elections by March, and they did not. The deadline was violated. Did CARICOM say anything? No. Did our government say anything? No. They just let the government do what it felt. Then the CCJ made a ruling. And they also said that the motion of no confidence was good and the government must resign by September. No move is being done. The government has not resigned. The parliament has not been dissolved. It does not look like it's going to happen. But again, 
Has CARICOM said anything? No. Has our government said anything? No. We are just allowing this abuse to happen. And if it happens to them, who's to say when abuse happens to us, no one will say anything. Nobody will say anything. We cannot be silent. <clears throat> Especially given Guyana's past, we know that there has been electoral fraud, murder of political opponents, like Walter Rodney most famously, violence and impoverishment in such a rich country. People are so poor. Now, yesterday, our Prime Minister gave an address to the nation. And I witnessed, and we all witnessed, a similar kind of bullying that occurred there that is also occurring in Guyana. His address brings up the same dangers over there, and we are seeing it here. We all know that Mr. Carlton Denny, the former SSA Director of Intelligence, raised an issue that he was instructed to fire East Indian members of the SSA and he refused. He went to court. He has court papers about that. He filed everything, affidavit. This is not a wild speculation. He's already been in court about this. He has the documents. It's not something wild. Yet, he is called dangerous for saying that. The opposition is called dangerous for revealing this. That is absurd. When somebody is calling out being victimized, then, they are then it's said they are being discriminated against. When somebody is calling out racism, they are called the racists. This is the trick they use to keep you divided and oppressed. Instead, what the Prime Minister did is use that forum to abuse an individual citizen, take secret classified files, reveal his information, and then use that platform to make racial accusations against the opposition using the government station not a PNM station not a paid political broadcast but our tax dollars for government political broadcasts at the same time they are abusing on that level they are now more and more locking up people for sed arresting people for sedition if you start to criticize the government. Today, it's Watson Duke. Yesterday, it was Sat Maraj. The day before, it was an anonymous Facebook blogger. Tomorrow, it could be you. It could be me. We don't know where this government is going. We are on a dangerous path in this country. In countries that are blessed with natural resources, human talent and creativity, we should be on the path of prosperity, but instead, it's a descending spiral of inflation, chaos, violence, abuse of office. It is up to us, all the people, as I said, not only the opposition, civil society, chambers of commerce, academics, professional organizations, everybody with a conscience who loves our country to stand up. We must not fail. All of us who cherish democracy independence, the rule of law, we must work together for this end. And we must stop the abuse by our governments. Thank you.